I'd like to thank you all for coming this evening to this event, which is co-sponsored by the Coalition for Democracy in Public Television and the School of the Art Institute, the video department. Um, our opening remarks are going to be by Scott Sanders, who's a spokesperson for the coalition. Scott. Thank you, Alan. Um, the Coalition for Democracy in Public Television welcomes everybody and thanks you all for coming. Special thanks are due the SAIC for the great facilities and the benefit their co-sponsorship of this evening brings. We owe deep thanks to Lewis Lapham for agreeing to come and John Calloway's Benton Fellowship Program for handling Mr. Lapham's expenses for this visit. We sincerely appreciate the presence of WTTW's Bruce Marcus and all of our busy panelists. And we thank each and every person who has supported our efforts with their expertise, commitment, and in a few cases, their money. But we reserve our deepest gratitude for the citizens and community representatives attending tonight. It is commonly agreed that commercial TV's 5 p.m. newscasts are mostly reprehensible, but public television is not inherently altruistic either. If we impress nothing else upon you tonight, it should be the fact that the small amount of public TV programming truly responsive to the diverse needs of our community is there due to pressure and struggle. Formed over a year ago, the Coalition for Democracy in Public Television has its roots in many of these efforts as well as the broader movements for social change. The more than 170 community groups under our coalition's umbrella range from the North Shore Peace Initiative to Operation Push to the Religious Task Force to oppose increased legalized gambling. All believe public television, WTTW, and its board of directors have failed in their missions and are lacking in accountability, representation, and openness. For example, why is the full station budget book unavailable for public inspection? Is our community best served when the top executive positions with real power at WTTW are always held by white males? And who picks WTTW's board of directors? Please look over our coalition's history and accomplishments listed in your programs. Make no mistake, we are very encouraged by things like CETA's concern about board diversity, WTTW's support of the series Viewpoint, and the recent live public forum on casino gambling. Our friends at Channel 11 are trying, but the obstacle course we've had to go through to get even this far would probably give the Green Beret pause. I would like to share an unusual experience I had with WTTW a year and a half ago to help put this evening into perspective. It involves a WTT board, WTTW board meeting I attended with two reporters, an unaired Academy Award winning documentary critical of the corporate source of WTTW's largest single check, and a number of security guards. But to move the evening along, I will refrain from telling that story now. We will be happy to provide the details of this to the media after tonight's program. Words like unprecedented and milestone are indeed appropriate in describing WTTW's participation in tonight's public forum. We invite Channel 11 to participate in more community dialogues like this one. We have a brilliant panel tonight and a special circumstance. Let's see if we can utilize this tool we have at our disposal to move forward now. Please take note of the handouts listing films banned by PBS. And on the back of your programs are a notice for our next meeting and a membership and donation form. Your help and participation are critical to our work. Thank you very much.